In this, in this lesson, we are going to take a look at, obviously, the Declaration of Independence. But before we get there, we need to talk about the fact that uh, the First Continental Congress, as we learned in, about in the last lesson, uh, they went home, and in between 1774 and when the Second Continental Congress comes to meet in 1775, we have uh, fighting that breaks out. All right, uh, the battles of Lexington and Concord in, in uh, 1775 are the first battles of the American Revolution. But we're jumping the gun even a little bit in this lesson. Let's, uh, let's take a look here. Uh, we have to talk about Thomas Paine. All right, Thomas Paine is very important during this period in time. He wrote a pamphlet known as Common Sense. Uh, because at this point in time, uh, not all the colonists were on board with the idea of declaring independence. Uh, many of them were not. And uh, you, uh, to give you some statistics, uh, roughly at the time, uh, heading into 1776, you had about a third of the colonists solidly in the let's declare independence camp. You had about a third that wanted to remain loyal to Great Britain. All right, uh, they did not want independence. And then you had about a third that were sitting on the fence, so to speak, that were undecided. And Thomas Paine's pamphlet was, was meant to help the undecideds decide to declare independence. All right? I mean, today we would watch television or, or you know, listen to people uh, speaking on the radio or reading the newspapers to see what other folks are thinking and, and people whose opinions we value are thinking about important issues uh, like this one, for example. Uh, back during the colonial period, of course, there was no uh, TV or radio, so it was the printed word. It was uh, newspapers, it was pamphlets, uh, and common sense. You can see here half a million copies were printed. Those are huge numbers for uh, uh, any time period. That would be a, a tremendous bestseller today. All right, The idea is we had, um, say, 4 million people living in the colonies, and that's probably uh, slightly overstating it. Uh, whereas today in the United States, we have over 330 million people. All right, uh, So just to give you a sense, uh, half a million copies were printed. This was widely read and discussed and argued. All right, But the crux of the point in this 56-page pamphlet was to convince colonists that declaring independence was indeed the right thing to do. So, the Second Continental Congress is meeting. The battles of Lexington and Concord are taking place, uh, necessitating a uh, Second Continental Congress in Philadelphia, and the delegates there decided to declare independence, to task Thomas Jefferson with writing it. And I do want to take a look at some pieces here. If we look in uh, item number one, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. All right, uh, the unalienable rights are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And he modifies John Locke's words there, but of course, there's there's John Locke. John Locke is all over this piece that you see here. All right, um, the natural rights theory, social contract theory, all right, if we see by uh, both numbers three, uh, particularly the top one, it says that whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it and to institute the new government. So we've pulled from John Locke to uh, explain why we're doing what we're doing philosophically, all right? Then, if you look at the very last line here, to prove this, let facts be submitted to a candid world. The rest of the document, or at least the middle section of the document, I'm sorry, and let me see if I can make this a little bit larger. We take a look at all of these sentences, and they all start with he. He has done this. He has done that. He, of course, is the king of Britain and what the colonists did here was to 
lists just about every single right or thing that the king had done that had denied in some way the colonists their rights. Notice here, I hope it all fits within the screen that you're looking at, in every stage of these oppressions we have petitioned for redress in the most humble terms. And we looked in the Stamp Act Congress, they did send a letter to the king to try and work it out. In the First Continental Congress, they sent a letter to the king to try and work it out. Uh, but but they're, they're claiming here, you know, our repeated petitions have been answered only by repeated injury. So the, the idea here is that they, they tried to work things out and, and were not able to because uh, it was not a situation that was going to be worked out. Britain, the British government, Parliament, the King were not interested in working it out, is the argument here. Now... What we have in the last portion of the Declaration, the last paragraph we see here, we finally get to the idea of declaring independence, and it's the first time we use the words uh, United States, all right, free and independent states. And this is the actual portion where we are declaring independence. And let's talk about we for a minute when I say we. These individuals were the elite of colonial society. And what I'm trying to say, it didn't matter whether they're from Massachusetts in the north or the southern state, uh, the southern colonies, um, these gentlemen had everything to lose by declaring independence. All right, they were um, uh, they, they were their their colonies elite, uh, you know, the wealthiest and whatnot, and they were now committing an act of treason, all right, uh, which is uh, punishable by death, of course. So, if this didn't work out, they would have been put to death. They would have lost everything. Uh, so it really begs the question: Why would the folks that have the most to lose? Uh, be doing this and and do keep in mind you know we're looking at 13 colonies all right we're talking about a bunch of farmers with guns all right going up against the greatest military power in the world at the time the British Army and Navy all right so it, it you know from their perspective it does look a bit like a fool's errand like it's a a silly thing to do here but um, I want to give you the sense of just how deeply they felt about John Locke's ideals that they committed to doing this, to putting everything they had on the line uh, with really little chance of success. And that, that, that brings us to what this Declaration of Independence really is here. I'll move over to the summary as I come over here. Um, this was a letter, yes, to Great Britain, of course, but it really was more a letter to the world. And, and by the world, I really mean Europe, because that was their focus of what was the world at the time. Uh, they knew they were going to need help. So they wanted to very clearly explain to the powers in Europe, this is what they were doing, this is why they were doing it. Uh, and And really were we should focus on France here remember Britain's great enemy was was France so it was uh, an attempt to sway uh, the King of France in particular I mean anyone who would be willing to send assistance but but the French in particular to uh, assist the colonists in in attempting to declare their independence all right so then just to sum up common sense was the pamphlet by Thomas Paine trying to sway colonial opinion in favor of declaring independence. And, and to a large extent it was successful, although there were a fair number of folks, of colonists, that were not interested in declaring independence at the time it was declared. All right? Almost a, all, somewhere between a fifth and a third of colonists were against declaring independence in 1776. All right? There are three parts to the Declaration. The first part 
uh, explains the overthrow of the British government using Locke's philosophy. The second lists all of the injustices uh, perpetrated on the colonists by the king. And then, of course, lastly, they actually get to the piece where they declare independence. And as I just mentioned, it is a letter to the world explaining what the colonists were doing in an attempt to get help from other nations because there was no way that they were going to beat the British on their own. We just did not have the talent. We were going to need help, and everybody knew it. We'll take a look at the American Revolution in the next lesson.